right here on the Muskegon Channel, Andy O'Reilly. <laughs> <laughs> you big dick. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> Andy Riley and the you baited me. that is Dave Cackley. You just you just you wake up and just think about ways you can annoy me. No, that you baited me into that one though. <laughs> Oh my God! Every time we get done with these things, I got to go back and produce them, right? Because I got to put the beginning, right. and the ending on them, and I got to you know mix it down and all this kind of crap. Every everyone, every time that I put this thing on YouTube, you look like this because <laughs> it, it it pulls up the stills. You know, like this is your right. your still shot that we're gonna put up for uh-huh. YouTube. You're always like this because you're touching your ears all the time, and then you have to have your drink, and then you have to. Yeah. It's, it's like, dude, just just. Do, do the what? news, would you? Well, I. Uh, this is your one shot at credibility throughout the entire day. I'm all no, I'm times, credible. All the I'm other times you're doing traffic. Seven. I'm credible doing traffic. I'm credible doing news. I'm credible credible pontificating and editorializing, and uh, you know, I, I let people see what I do. I you know, I you, touch my ears. I enjoy a beverage, as we all do. <laughs> you literally, you literally do traffic. And tell people to check their Twitter while they're driving. Yes. Not while they're driving. Well, well they're pull out the before they go. Get... It makes no sense. Dude, I'm doing traffic on TV. Obviously, if they're watching me on TV, they haven't gone out on the roads yet. Right. But by the time they get wherever they're going, it's going to be cleared. No, no, it all depends on. And construction is never cleared. I'll give you that. Okay. If they don't know the construction's on their way, there's already a problem. Well, this is day one of construction. You got. Uh, well, I let them know when it's going to end, how much longer. You know, it's it's very <laughs> important. Twitter, the next accident I could be talking about is yours. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh my God! All right. So, so are, anyway, this, you, this will be our last little newscast for a few days because, uh, yeah. as you can see, look at that. What you got an official wristband? You got to wear that all weekend. Yeah, you get one every day that you work. So you're an honorary hippie today, well, and for the next four like days. I mean, you know, I, I, dude, I'm not. And, and you know, I'm a little sensitive to the whole thing because uh-huh. out here in Muskegon, there really is this this perception that it's some kind of what's the word I'm looking for? You know, and, and the word hippie. Okay, they kick it around, blah blah blah, and, and good yeah. for them. Let them be hippies, whatever. We got motorcycle got no guys that come here every year. We got and nobody seems to have a problem with that. We got, uh, you know, the Unity Fest comes in. Right, <laughs> you don't hear people freaking out about ten thousand Bible beaters showing up, do you? No, of course not. <laughs> they're bringing Jesus. Much. They're bringing Jesus. You got you got people bringing Jesus. You got people uh, bringing patchouli oil. You got people bringing, um, you know, whatever. That I, I'm all in, it, I'm all inclusive. Well, I've, I was go. just saying it's it's good for you to get in touch with your with your hippie dem. It, it's a good time. Fine, and we're looking forward to it. So they're nice people. I'm not really an honorary hippie or anything i'm just uh i'm a i'm a guy going up to do a little bartending are you gonna wear a tie-dye shirt you should wear a tie-dye shirt if Actually, you want to they've, they've got us in uniforms this year really i have to wear khaki pants and a okay. white button-up shirt a white butt really yeah well i say i don't think that i don't agree with that i think you should be wearing tie-dye well it, it, and maybe a little beret this this thing know. that we work in is, is called hangar 17 and they always have a theme and, and and this year they've got a theme where they want people dressed up in, in white and khaki. So, you know, went okay. to the Meyer last night, bought myself some khaki pants, and <laughs> off we go. What? What? I, thought, uh, I went to the Meyer last night, bought some khakis. I don't have any khaki pants. I don't. Okay. <laughs> Why would I, what would I Who need khaki own a pair? pants for? Everybody owns, everybody owns like one pair of Jim Harbaugh specials. Come no, on. No, no, no. Everybody's got a pair. Cindy bought me, and, and tell me this. Let's let's do one logic question, man, man woman logic question before. Okay. We Cindy went to Kohl's and she bought some some khaki pants and some black dress pants, and they were they're really nice pants, right? Uh huh. All right. So I go to Meyer last night and I find these these pants that were much more affordable and much more attuned to the working environment. Yeah. So I pick these pants up and I'm like, hey, look at I got these pants. They were fifteen dollars a pair. These will be great for the, the, the electric force thing, and you can take the ones back. She goes, I'm not taking those back because I'm using the Kohl's cash, which I, apparently is a rebate that you get when you buy right. these things. I uh, said, well, how much is the Kohl's cash that you got? She goes, I got $30 worth. So how much were the pants? So they were $30 a pair. I said, well, if you take three of the pants back, how many would you get? How much would you get? So, you know, at $30 a yeah. pair, that's $90, right, if you take back three pairs of pants? 
Uh-huh. Doesn't that kind of outweigh the thirty dollars? Yeah, I, I would, I would, I would say so. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Okay, but uh, you're you're using math. I know, and that confuses people. Well, I, I get okay. that, and I'm not very good at math either, you know. But no. uh, remember, I couldn't tell that kid the multiplication answer the other day. Right, I still am shocked by that. By I, the way, I, my son, my son has mastered his three multiplications. Next week we do fours. And uh, if he doesn't get him get him right, he doesn't get lunch. Well, so the reason the, re- the reason it was, the the kid asked me a seven question. And sevens are hard. Yeah. Okay. What's seven times eight? Fifty six. Add a boy. Look at you. Seven yeah, times four. Th- it was multiple numbers. It was like seven times fourteen or something like that. Oh, okay. See, all right, so understandable. That's where it got hard. Okay, gotcha. Anyway, so as we uh, sail off into the sunset till about Tuesday, why don't we go ahead and do a little uh, news magic here? All your right, chance to shine. Do it. Make your mama okay. proud, Dave Cagley. Absolutely. The stabbing of a police officer at a Flint airport Wednesday was an act of terrorism. This, Ooh. according to the FBI, Bishop International Airport was evacuated after Officer Jeff Neville was stabbed in the neck. He is in stable condition. The FBI has a 50 year old Canadian suspect in custody. The man reportedly shouted, God is great in Arabic before the attack. Ooh. So. You said it the other day. It's it's coming here, and yep. it's it hit Flint. So now a lot of people say, "Well, this is a lone attack. This isn't necessary. We don't know if this is connected." This is at the very at the very least tacitly connected to what was that word? ISIS. Tacitly. Tacitly. Yes, is connected. That a word? To, yes, tacitly is a word. Look it up. Okay. Um, it's you know it's terrorist adjacent if it's not connected to either ISIS or Al Qaeda. Whatever it was inspired at the very least. Okay. You'd say it was. Oh wait, wait, wait. He's what? He wasn't wearing the uniform. We don't know that he had. He had communication with you know a guy who knew a guy who's related to a guy who is. I mean, come on. The the thing that this guy was shocked by. He was shocked that the that the officer he stabbed didn't kill me. He's like, why didn't you kill me? Because hmm? he wanted to die. This guy wanted to die in this attack. Yeah. Because there are those who, um practice a form of or, or adhere to once again a certain sect of this religion that believes that if you die essentially in a holy war uh you go straight to heaven sure so he wanted to die yep 72 versions and everything there you go unfortunately no he didn't yeah. so now we got to go through the whole he's gonna be 72 process. versions himself yeah <laughs> oh god Actor George Clooney reportedly selling his Casamigos tequila brand to the owner of Johnny Walker. The cost could be up to $1 billion. The Ocean's Eleven star launched the brand with two partners in 2013. He plans to stick around until the sale closes. I love this. I love actors. I love artists branching out and becoming businessmen. Because remember back in the day, it's like if you were an artist, if you're an actor, if you were a musician, like, no, 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 I'm above that. I'm an artist. I don't, I'm not going to do this capitalistic swine. Gar- no, I like guys trying to make an extra buck and good for George Clooney. I'm not a big tequila guy. I made bad decisions on tequila and I think all tequila is hot garbage, but, but good for him. Okay, good. What about you? Back, did you have a, you know, back in your uh, drunken, Degenerate days, did you have uh, a particular tequila you liked, or was no. that something you stayed away from? I threw up tequila once, and that was enough for me. <laughs> Just once? Just once. That's all it took. Do you remember what kind of, what it was? What, Cuervo. What, what, Cuervo? Yeah. Every, yeah. Plus, yeah, you got the Jimmy Buffett freaks that all think, you know, oh, the Cuervo. Oh, God. Uh, yeah. And then you got Steely Dan singing about Cuervo, <laughs> which makes me want to just jam knives in my ears. I hate Steely Dan. I oh, hate Steely God. Dan. Why? Okay, why? What's I the? What? I, I can't. St- any song that comes on by Steely Dan, I just want to barf. Okay. I hate them. I hate their music. It's... I hate their vibe. I don't. Ugh. What about James? What, what about James Taylor? It's love the James same. Taylor. You love James Taylor and hate Steely Dan. To- totally different yeah. vibe. Well, it's both. It, it, it's it's essentially flaccid rock. No, you know, James what Taylor it is? is thoughtful and insightful and, okay. and, and gives, your, gives your life meaning. Steely <laughs> Dan are these two ultra-hip jazz fusion <laughs> jackasses that... Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> hey, Steely. Oh. All right. Okay. Can't stand them. Understood. All right. 
Point made. Thank you. A man, a man badly burned in a Kent County house fire claims a clandestine marijuana wax operation was happening inside the home before it exploded. The blast occurred just before 11 p.m. last night on Lime, Lime Lake Drive. That's just northeast of Sparta. What? Lime Lake. I said Lime Lake. Anyway. <laughs> 30, I was close enough. 39-year-old victim was taken to Spectrum Health Butterworth with severe burns. His condition is unknown. I was just up so. the road from uh, where I grew up. Yeah. That's 10 so. miles. Lime Lake. A lot of, uh, lot of uh, drug activity happened there back in your heyday back no, when you stopped not really. Stopped and, around. Um, we never did much on Lime Lake because there wasn't really a good public access to it. Yeah. Around there, there was, like, Long Lake. There was uh, Camp Lake. There was Lime Lake. Um and the you know, Lime Lake is just up 10 miles from where I grew up. Um, yeah, we just never, never had, did much on it at all. I don't think I've ever even been out on it, to be honest with you. What, so is that, is that a fairly secluded area? I think um, if you're going to run an operation like like this. and no, you're, you're, I mean, you know where 10-mile and Pine Island is? Yeah. Yeah, right up there. It's just maybe half a okay. mile up the road toward 131. Okay, so it's not, but it's not like necessarily that heavily traveled. So if you on wanted mile? to... Well, I well Lime Lake itself isn't. Oh, well, it's like any other well, lake. Sorry. I mean, people, there's okay. houses all the way around it. Yeah, I was just thinking you you could still probably hide stuff. Yeah, so if you're going to do sure. have a and, and if you're going, what what my point being, if you were going to have a clandestine marijuana wax operation, that's not the worst place to have it. You know, until the house explodes, right? Then it's a bad place. Yeah, and, and then you what, know what a marijuana wax egg, uh, thing is. I've never heard of such. A thing. Yeah, I've I've never heard of that either. Once again, you and I need to be. We need to have more druggy friends. Well, I don't think either one of us looking this weekend. Yeah, let's see. Let's see what we can do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'll hit the bars. You hit the electric forest. Okay. We'll see. We'll come back. We'll come back uh, Tuesday with uh, with our report. reports with a full report on. Uh, we'll try and figure out what clandestine marijuana operations are. <laughs> In fact, this is this is you and I both both doing investigative journalism. I'll tell you what, I'll call myself John Stossel. You, you go ahead and be Geraldo Rivera. <laughs> no, I want to be Stossel. I like no, Stossel. I called it. Sorry. No, no, Rivera's a douchebag. Well, Come I on. Know. Okay, well then you can be. Um, I'm trying to think of another investigator. Who's that? Uh, who's that creepy guy with the white hair? Oh, oh God. Um, I know, I know his name. Yeah, he's very, very guy. pasty. You can be him. He's a very pasty guy. Yeah, you uh, can be him. Okay, I'll be that guy. I want to be Stossel. Right. Oh. Well, you know, we'll flip a coin. I, I like Stossel. I called it first. I, to... I called Fine. it first. Fine. Sit down, Vern. Fine. All right. Beaches along Lake Michigan could see dangerous wave and current conditions today with the storms moving into the area. The National Weather Service has issued a coastal hazard alert for swim areas from St. Joseph all the way up to Manistee, strong currents could make for hazardous swimming at Grand Haven State Park and at Pier Marquette, Muskegon. This is one of those days you really want to be aware if you're going to be out swimming because it's going to be kind of humid today. Uh, you got to be aware of those currents because every time we have conditions like these, it seems like somebody gets caught in it, gets taken out, and we got a drowning victim. So I got you a don't much more good idea. That. What? Don't go swimming. What? <laughs> Well, you want to get refreshed. You want you want to. It's a thunderstorm. It's water and lightning. Well, no, no. This is, you don't go out in the storms, but after this, after they pass through, you still have wind and you happened? still have currents and is stuff. Is that what happened? Is that is that what happened when you were a kid? Did your mom teach you it was okay for electricity and water? No, no. <laughs> I mean, you were kind of late in the litter. They they could have been sick. Yeah. Hey, Dave, here's a toaster. Go take a bath. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. It's not dangerous. <laughs> Just set it right next to you, right on the corner of the tub. Here, Dave. By the way, hey, here's a hair dryer. You know, while you still have your hair, you can for dry what? it right afterwards. What do you need a hair dryer for? You never, you never used a hair dryer when you were a kid. When you were younger <laughs> and had hair. Now. Well, now that's why I was saying that. See, I was being self-deprecating, and then you had to come and double slam me. That's not cool. <laughs> that's how it works, man. Whatever. That's why it's called the Andy and Dave. Uh huh. <laughs> when you get name first, you get that. You yeah, get, you get that. You know. Gotcha. If it was All Dave right. and Andy, it'd be the other way around. Okay, it's uh, my my fault for coming in second in the <laughs> alphabet. <laughs> it's sports. Tigers lose to Seattle seven to five. It was Cubs lose, Cubs lose, Cubs lose again. They fall to San Diego three to two. And Muskegon they lose to Lake Erie oh. seven to three. They are now six and seven 
on the season. That's Muskegon sport. Clippers baseball. Yep. We're working on establishing yep. that name and that brand. We want to get those okay. people out there to see them at Hackley Park. Or no. Um, you see, you don't even see. You should ding I know, yourself. I just blew it, didn't I? Marshfield. Mm-hmm. My bad. They, oh, oh, have another signature drink. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right, you big butthole. I'll plan on seeing you Tuesday. Later. Have a good weekend.